yeah, I think um, everyone's kind of finished their seasons and we've come now to, to be together as a squad. And yeah, you get the feeling that we're already working towards something. So uh, it's been a good good few days of training for me so far. And um, yeah, you get the feeling that we're, we're moving towards something. Um, you had an event for last international window. Talk us through it. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, it was a bit hectic, to be honest, um, with the regulations and not being able to, uh, yeah, be with the squad for the entire period and having to, to kind of fly in and then fly back and the uncertainty of whether I was going to make it back for the second game. So, yeah, it was um, a bit hectic and, and not exactly ideal, but I think uh, we managed it very well and, and all credit to the FAW for um, sorting everything out and, and, yeah, just being able to be there was was massive for me and, and then to be able to play and get a good result was also yeah amazing in the end after all that um yeah after everything that had gone on to be able to do that and the result at the last game uh, was fantastic because initially you knew you'd be able to go to Belgium but and then go back to Germany but obviously you missed the Mexico game when did you know you might be able to fly to the UK um can't remember exactly but I think it was um about three days before the I think it was the day after possibly the day after the Mexico game um or maybe even the day after that but I was waiting since I since I'd got back to Germany I was just kind of waiting um for the for the text to say that I could go um and then eventually that came through one morning and then I was on a flight uh, a couple of hours later so it all happened quite fast so were you surprised when you're in the you know playing in the game um yeah I mean I obviously we knew from the start that I would only be able to kind of play the Belgium game and then I have to go back so it was um from the start it was kind of yeah not known that I was going to be playing in the Czech Republic game so it was a little bit of a surprise but I think um from the moment I went back after the Belgian game we were, we knew we were kind of working towards it and working towards getting me back there and so I kind of mentally prepared myself for that in that sense um so a little bit surprised that it actually went through because I wasn't expecting it to. But on the other side, I was I was already preparing myself for it. And I suppose you occupy one of the positions that is maybe as hotly contested as any in the Wales squad. So missing a game doesn't do anybody any good, does it? No, for sure. I was very happy to be able to make it back um, and very thankful for all the work that was put in behind the scenes to, to make that possible. And like you say, it's a hotly contested spot. I think we've got a lot of good players um, in the same position and um, yeah it's good competition for places but that's always very healthy and I think it you know it breeds a yeah it breeds a, a certain level of, um, yeah, of of kind of anticipation and that ups everyone's game I mean with the competition you've got you've had Joe Roden playing alongside you obviously he's made a big move to Tottenham this season what have you made of his progress and and is it reflecting in what you see when you're alongside him? Yeah, obviously, he's, you know, really grown the last couple of seasons. Um, just, you know, he always had that had that talent. Um, and then for him to make such a big move is, is a big step in his career at such a young age. And I think the progression that you see him make is, um, is, is really good. And, you know, I get to see it on the, on the level that when we're on the pitch together. Um, so, yeah, just to be able to play with him is obviously a, a, a good thing for me because... Um, yeah, at his level now and the way he's stepped up in the, in the last couple of years, um, he's a big, big value to us. I mean, you look at who Wales have played in the those centre-back roles, you know, obviously yourself and Joe and Chris Mepham and Tom Lockyer, Ben Cabango. Do you feel um, Ethan Ambadu could play there? Ben Davis can play th there as well. Do you feel somebody's going to miss out? Is that the feeling amongst you all? Um, I don't know. I wouldn't say necessarily that's the feeling. Um, I think we're, we're all here uh, on the training camp to, to kind of, yeah, do our best and show the, the gaffer what we're, what we're made of. And, and at the end of the day, it's going to be his decision and um, it's going to be out of our hands. And the only thing we can do really is, is yeah, just hope that we've done enough in the, in the past games that we played or the past times we've been away with Wales um, and that we show enough this week to be put into consideration. So, I would say it's kind of a healthy competition. Like I said, it it definitely raises everyone's game and everyone wants to be on the, the, the very top level because of it. Uh, and with everything, how are people taken to Rob Page, you know, being the manager now? 
Yeah, I think very well. I mean, the last few camps, obviously, he's been he's been there and 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 taking you know most of it. So um, I think it wasn't that big of an adjustment for us because he's he's been in and around the team for a while now. So um, yeah, obviously, um, looking forward to to working with him more closely and then for him to to really um, yeah grow with the team as well. And looking at this weekend with a sense of excitement, trepidation, how would you describe it? This weekend, you mean the... The, the, the final announcement, the when you'll final. be told. Oh, the, yeah. Uh, the, the squad announcement. Yeah, I think everyone's looking forward to it. I think um, that's obviously going to be a big moment. And um, yeah, whether, whether you're in or not, it's going to be either a joyous moment or a, a bit of a painful one. But I think um, this week right now, we're focusing on getting ready and, and the next, you know, friendly games next week and all of those kind of things. I think everyone has to kind of think about the future um, in a positive sense. And so, yeah, when Sunday comes, we'll know for sure. But up till then, I think, yeah, we've just got to, we've got to train hard and, and work really well here in Portugal first. And if you get the nod, there's plenty of people in St. Pauli where you've been the captain now as well. Going to be really happy for you. Yeah, absolutely. The, the support I've had from St. Pauli has been tremendous. Um, the fans and the coaches, the players, all the staff. So, um, yeah, it's a, it's a club that definitely give you that feeling that you've got the support back there. So that's, that's also another nice, nice thing. James, wish you the best. Thanks. Thank you very much. Hiya, James. Nice to see you again. Hiya. Um, just to touch on, you know, this week, what's it, or these past few days, what's it been like out in Portugal? Because obviously you guys need to be focused. You're working towards the Euros. It's quite intense, but I can imagine... Rob Page probably wants you guys to be quite relaxed and to enjoy this time away together as well. Yeah, I think there's definitely both elements um, right now. We're obviously training very hard on the pitch, but outside of that, he also, you know, wants to create that, that team atmosphere and that togetherness. So we, we've had some nice relaxing moments as a team, um, you know, being able to, to do what activities we can together um, to create that kind of atmosphere. So I think that's been nice, um, a balance to have a good balance in there of, of hard work and then um, time off to kind of, um, yeah, mentally prepare and rest and also to get that, that nice squad feeling. And give us a sense of what's it like mentally as a player this last week or last few days before the squad is announced. Is that, is it on your mind, you know, when you, when you wake up in the morning? Not particularly. I think, um, especially with the way we've been training, I think, um, yeah, you just want to go in every day and, and give your hundred percent. And like I said, we've had some tough sessions, so um, yeah, it's not not really easy to have something else on your mind. I think, you know, when when we finish this week, I think then obviously all eyes will be on the the squad announcement and all anticipation will be there. But for now, I think we're just kind of focusing on on the work we're putting in every day. Of course, you weren't a part of the 2016 squad, you've had an incredible rise in, you know, in, in recent years. How much would it mean to you? Because I remember speaking to you in your first call up years ago, you know, you weren't expecting it. How much would it mean to you if you were included in, in that squad? Yeah, it would be obviously a dream come true. So um, that's something that every player dreams of playing internationally and then on the next level playing internationally in a, in a big tournament like that. So yeah, um, it would mean the world to me and I would be yeah, really humbled and, and appreciative if I was selected. Amazing. Dear James, best of luck. Thank you. Dear Shannad, uh, Roger Clark. Hi, uh, good to see you. Hiya. Hi. Um, can I just ask about, you talked about Robert Page before. Have you had a sense coming into this camp that He's now going to stamp his own ideas, his own thoughts, or is it a matter of continuing what's got you this this far as a squad? Um, I think, of course, he would want to bring in his, some of his own ideas and philosophies. I think um, as a coach, um, you've got to kind of believe in yourself and believe that the things that you bring to the table are going to have a positive effect on the team as well. Um, so I definitely think he's going to bring in some, some new things uh, and, and try and do things a little bit his own way. Um, but at the same time, um, he was a part of the progress we've made so far. So I think building on that will also be a, a major theme um, because he's already been involved in that already. So he, he knows, uh, yeah, he knows the core of it and he knows what we've been working on. So I think a little bit of both, um, just trying to build us up to be 
yeah, to be better in all aspects. You talked about how everyone's working hard in preparation, getting the team and the squad ready, but is there, is there also the sense, do you feel, um, just looking around, a sense of competition? Because people do know that this squad's going to be whittled down and, and they are competing for places in that final squad. Yeah, I think, um, I mean, we're footballers, so I mean, there's always a level of competition, whether you're playing at the club or at your country, it's, um, it's competition for places. And um, I think, like I said before, that's only a healthy thing um, if, you know, if it's dealt with in the right way. Uh, and I think, yeah, I mean, the, the feeling is, of course, there are only a limited number of places and everyone here right now wants to be, wants to be on that plane. You know, they want that, that ticket. So, um, like I said, it, it should raise everyone's kind of level um, and, and, you know, we should get better as a squad because of it. How, how competitive can you get in these training sessions? Because no one wants to inflict any injuries and no, no one wants to be the man who puts Gareth Bale out of the competition or Aaron Ramsey or something like that. So how competitive in terms of contact and so on can, can you be? And this is what I mean by, you know, healthy competition. I think um, everyone knows the, the kind of boundaries. I think uh, as a footballer, you've been, been in the sport so long um, and you've played at a professional level. I think you know what the, what the limits are. Um, and I think every player um, should have that aggression and have that bite in training, especially just to keep for yourself and also for, for your teammates to, to give them a certain level of, um, yeah, so that they can train also on a high level because if everyone's backing off and not touching anyone, then you don't really train anything. So obviously there's a, there is a certain level to it, but yeah, there's, there's definitely a clear line, I think. And I think everyone realizes when that's being crossed and when it hasn't. And just finally from me, um, we all remember how, how fantastic things went in the last Euros for Wales, perhaps un unexpectedly. Do you think this time around, now people know a little bit more about, about Wales, and given how things went last time, that the, the expectations among the wider population and from the squad uh, are perhaps different from they were what, four or five years ago? Yeah, perhaps. I think um, with the last showing, it was one of the most memorable showings, I think, in, in the Euro 2016. So... Um, I think it's something that a lot of people remember. Um, and I think that it's something that a lot of teams will take note of and think that, you know, they can't really, um, yeah, take us for granted a little bit. So, yeah, maybe the teams will take us, um, you know, quite seriously. But I think on the other side of it, that's a good thing. I think we're, we're ready for it. And, um, yeah, on the other side, we've been taken seriously kind of since. So you see in all our qualification games, um, and now the, you know, the Euro qualification and then the World Cup qualification games. Yeah, teams definitely knew um, well, a little bit more what to expect from us. But we, we, you know, we rose to the challenge. Excellent. Thanks a lot. All the best. Thank you very much. OK, thanks, Roger. Um, Phil Blanche. Hi, James. Um, Hi, I'm sorry. Yeah. That's all right. Can you hear me? Yeah, good. Um, I was just yeah. going to ask you... Um, Obviously, you've had a very unusual career for a, a Welsh-stroke British player. Do you think your sort of experience of continental football, as it were, is that going to sort of help you during a tournament like the Euros? Well, I, I like to think that it's helped me so far in my career. Um, I like to think that it's a big part of the reason that I've, I've managed to get to where I was. Um, and when I was you know, playing in Belgium, it was when, it was when I was first selected for, for Wales. So... Yeah, I like to think that that has a part to do with it. Um, and I like to, to lean on that a little bit and, you know, use that experience in order to, to continue to progress. I saw somewhere down the line, you, you'd like to play Germany in the tournament, wouldn't you? I think, yes. Um, yeah, that would, be a, that would be a fantastic game. Um, playing against the country that you're playing in, you know, with your national team is always a, a, yeah, a nice feeling. I mean, I think where we played against Belgium, obviously I'd been playing in Belgium, so I knew some of the players there as well. Um, so yeah, it's good. It's always nice to pit yourself against um, the places that you've been and, and, and things like that. And they're, they're in a bit of a state of flux. I think they're changing their manager after the tournament. What, what's the mood like there going into the Euros? Um, I wouldn't really know, to be honest. Um, I haven't really got any insights into, into the, the German team, um, except for what I've kind of been hearing around the club. So yeah, unfortunately, I can't really say too much about it. No problem. Thanks, Thanks James. All the best. Thank you. Thanks, Phil. Um, Phil Cardin. Hi, James. Um, hope you're well. You, you Hi, yeah, good, thanks. 
You were saying before that you've had to have a balance between work and a little bit of leisure this week. Um, I've seen on Instagram a lot of the players were involved in the golf tournament. I just wondered uh, who won the tournament. Um, I I don't know. I don't. It wasn't. I don't think it wasn't like a, a group tournament. It was more, you know, between fours um, going around the course. So um, all I know is I didn't win in my in my group. <laughs> Fair enough. No problem. Thank you. Okay, George, Reese, Julian. Hiya, James. Nice to, nice to meet you. Hiya. I just wanted to ask you about Sam Pauli because at the start of the year, you went on a great run of form. And I was just wondering how you'd sort of assess your season. Yeah, I think um, at the beginning of the season, we, we kind of struggled um, to, yeah, to adapt and implement everything that the new manager had, had brought in at the time. I think we were a team that um, needed some time to grow and, and really find, find our rhythm and find our formation. And I think we always knew that we did have the quality to, to start playing very well. And then after Christmas, um, you know, we had, we then had a couple of training camps um, to go off and it all kind of came together. So we had, you know, we had a couple of new faces coming to the team, bringing new, new energy, new life. And um, yeah, I think, the, the run of form that we went on was was very deserved. I think the football that we played was was really good during that period. Um, and then, yeah, coming coming into the end of the season, we had a, another little bit of a downtrend, um, which I think is is a little bit normal because we weren't really playing for anything at, at that point. Um, so you could say that was a little bit normal. It was a bit of a shame because I would have preferred to finish on a high note. But I think all in all, if you look at our season, you could say that. Um, yeah, the progression that we made was 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 really brilliant, and to be one of the best teams in the in the second half of the season is a is a big step for us. And of course, you you beat Hamburg earlier on in the season. That must have sort of put a cherry on top of your your season, really, even though you didn't go up. Yeah, absolutely. I think we always look forward to those games. The you know the derby, and um, yeah, it's the biggest one for this for the city, and I think there's a lot riding on it. So. To do that now again after having done it the year before um, was yeah, a brilliant feeling. And you've been there now for two seasons. You've been captain at times this year. Have you have you kind of settled there now? Is that where you can see yourself staying for, for quite a while? Yeah, I think um, like you say, I feel I feel quite settled there. Um, having been captain is obviously is a, a big step in my my personal development as well. Um, and so it also shows that the the trust that the team has in me and that the coach has in me. So I think, yeah, it's a good fit and I'm enjoying my football there. Thanks, James. All the best. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, everyone. Thanks, James. And yeah, see you all um, next week. Bye, everyone.